In this video, we're going to look at using database formulae to generate more sophisticated analysis. Now, when you're looking to answer sophisticated questions, specifying one or two or maybe three criteria, it's a really critical point uh, for your spreadsheet, for how you're approaching data generally. That's because at this point, people can kind of go one or two one of two ways. I find that often people go in the wrong direction. And for me, the wrong direction is splitting up the database to simplify it, to allow you to, ge to, allow you to generate the analysis you need. For example, in our database, we're talking about four different regions. So I often see in my work, people will split the database up into four sub databases, four smaller databases, to allow them to generate the analysis you need. Now, I suggest that that is the wrong approach. I highly recommend that you keep a single database, maintain it well, keep the quality of data as high as you can. Then rather than spending time splitting up the database and dramatically increasing the complexity of the file, it's gonna be much more stressful working with a file with lots of different databases in. Rather than doing that, focus on learning the techniques you need to answer those sophisticated questions about a single database. So multiple criteria. So questions like the ones we're gonna look at in this video. So what is the gender balance across the regions? So there we're talking about multiple criteria. We're talking about the regions and then the gender balance uh, within them. So we're gonna have to ask the database to look at um, the regions and within those regions to look at the male, female and other, the gender balance. So that's an example of a sophisticated query. At this point, don't be tempted to split up the database, keep the database on the same sheet, spend your time learning the advanced database formally you need to get the analysis you need quickly and efficiently. And that's the aim of this video, to start answering some of those more sophisticated queries using database formulae. So let's get into uh, the spreadsheet file. Again, I've got the same download file. Download it using the link below this video. And we're moving on to questions four and five in this video. So what is the total number of children for each region? So let's copy paste that question first onto the analysis sheet. You can see I'm switching sheets using the keyboard shortcuts, control page up, control page down on a PC. Control V to copy paste in there. So what's the total number of children for each region? So here we have a criteria, which is the region. And then we want to add up the number of children uh, in that region. So we've got a criteria and we want to perform an operation on rows that fit that criteria. Uh, in order to give us the analysis we need. So this is more sophisticated, you know, we could do it with a sum formula if we sorted the database by region and then kind of selected the cells uh, that we want. We could split up the database, but we've already decided we don't want to do that. So what formula will allow us to do this, keeping the database in one place without doing any sorting or anything like that? It's totally possible with the right formula. Let's look at the sum if formula. So equals sum if open bracket. So usual steps when you start a formula equals, type in the formula, and then take a second to look at the components required. Excel is giving us um, information here about the information it needs um, in order to make this formula work. So we've got three components here. Two are required. One is optional, but I find usually with some if you do need the third optional component, sum range. Usually you do need that sum range third optional component. So let's go through them. So range and criteria. Number one, number two, range and criteria. So, well, let's talk about criteria first. Um, as we mentioned in the first video, the criteria is the specific piece of data that we're using to distinguish between rows we want to include and rows we want to exclude. That's what criteria means. What rows, rows do we want to include? What piece of data, what column in the database are we using in order to establish that? Distinguish between the rows we want to exclude, the rows we want to include. So that's the criteria and the range is where is that cr criteria in the database? So let's go back to the question. 
What is the total number of children for each region? So region is going to be our criteria. The number of children is the thing that we're adding up. Region is going to be our criteria. So what range, what column contains that region information? That's the first thing we're going to need uh, for some if. So let's go to our database again. I'm going to switch back to the data sheets. Then we're looking for the column in the database that contains the region information, control and up cursor to go to the top of the database. Then I can see region is here in column G. So I'm going to go to the first line in the database. I'm going to ignore the header. The first line in the database, row six, control shift down. And I've got to the bottom uh, of the database there. So this is the first component, the range that contains the data that is our criteria. Not the best explanation, but if you just keep following the video, video working through yourself, I'm confident you'll be able to do it. So then comma, we've now moved on to the next component of the formula. We can see the criteria uh, component is now highlighted. So criteria, it's saying, what data do you want to include? So we are looking at regions. So for the time being, let's just put north in here. So this means that rows, uh, rows that contain north in the range we specified in column G, they're going to be included in the analysis. Now, one thing to mention at this point that I did forget is the references, uh, the references on, on the ranges. It's a good idea to fix these using absolute references. We're going to do that now. Just got the cursor in there, hitting the F4 key. The dollar signs are in there. That's an absolute reference. So wherever we copy paste that formula, that reference will stay the same. That's generally good practice when using database formulae. So we've got our criteria. We've said we want to look at the north region. And then we've told Excel where that criteria is in the database. Now, finally, some range, some range. So Excel here is saying, where is the range that you want to sum up? So we want to perform an operation on, on some cells, sum them up. Where is that range in the database? That's what Excel is asking us. We're looking at total number of children. That's what we want to add up. So back to the database and then uh, number of children in column K. There we go, into the database now. And then column K, same thing. In row six, control shift, down cursor. That selected uh, the data I need. Good practice at this point, again, F4 key, fix the references, those references are now absolute. So we've got three components here. Gonna hit the enter key and we've got 54. So does that answer the question for, for the, the North region and how might we check that? Okay, so let's go back into the database, try and check that. So a good way to validate this would be to sort the database by region, which is what I'm going to do. You can see in the first video, a more detailed uh, description of how to do this. So we're in column G here. There we go, A to Z. So I'm going to go back to the top of the database. I can see this is now sorted by region. We want to go to the north, to the north entry. So I've just manually, using the cursors, navigated down the database. I can see the north entries are here. And then I'm going to go across the database, hold down the shift key and select the range on the database that contains the children information for the north uh, entries. Okay, off we go, further down. There we go, and it's just here. So I can now see in the bottom right-hand corner of Excel, just outside of your screenshot, um, I can see 54. So it's saying the sum of these cells is 54. And I can see, looking at the range we've selected in the database, so I've got all of the north rows selected there. So it's saying the total number of children for the north region is 54. So let's check that against our analysis. And our analysis here says 54. So we've put the formula in and validated it. Always good practice to do the validation. Okay. So that's done for the North region, but we want to know each region. So it would be a good idea here to create a table. And I'm going to say North. 
south, east, west. So we've got each of our regions in the table there. And then I'm going to copy paste uh, this formula into this cell, into our table. Effectively, there we go. Just going to hit F2 here. Okay. So this formula, uh, just copy pasted it. And because the references are, are absolute, we used absolute references using the F4 key to put the dollar signs in. Those references are gonna stay the same. I can check them now, row six to row 255. That is That corresponds to the database well. So the formulae appear to be accurate. I wanna make a change at this point though, because I don't want to copy paste the formulae down and then to manually change the text in there, north, south, east, west. It would be much better to refer to the cell that already contains that information. That's gonna certainly help speeding things up. So there we go. And then I can just copy paste this formula down. Okay, and we've got four different numbers. Well, that makes sense because um, we're asking four different questions. How many children in the north? How many children in the south? How many children in the east? How many children in the west? So we would expect those numbers to be different. I'm going to go to a cell below the table we've created, Alt plus, Alt plus shortcut on the, on the PC, Alt plus, that gives me the total of the column there. So that's saying total children, children in the database is 262. This is another validation technique for us. 262 children in total in the database. Let's go back to the data sheet. And here, let's say equals sum from the top of the data, database all the way down to the bottom. And then we've got 262. So just put a sum formula in there to validate the sum if formula. We've got the same outcome. So good practice to do validation, try to get the same result a different way. So this is giving me confidence in these uh, sum if formulae. And we've actually managed to answer our question there. The total number of children for each region using sum if we managed to get that information so much easier than sorting the database and kind of selecting ranges in the database. De definitely easier than splitting up the database, the sum if formula. So what other questions do we want to answer in this video? What is the average number? The average number of children for each region. So let's copy paste this question in. I'm just going to put this question. Yeah, let's put it in column H because we're going to put this information in the same table. At this point, I'm going to just uh, cut and paste, cut and paste what I've put in, just cut and paste that down one row. So we've got sum if here, and then we want average if. So sum if is adding up all of the entries, average if, average if is going to give us an average uh, for the entries that we specify using the criteria, another super powerful database formula. Is similar, is definitely similar, to sum if in terms of its components, in terms of how you put it together. So rather than starting from scratch, let's just try copy pasting the sum if formula across. Now we can see with that copy paste, the result has changed. So what's happened there? Well, here, this second component refers to C15, but I can see there's no, there's no absolute reference there. So when I copy it across, that component has changed. Uh, to D15 because it's a relative reference, it's moved across. So let's just fix that quickly by making this a partial absolute reference. So there I've just fixed the column. We can see the dollar signs around the C there. That's going to fix the column. It's not going to fix the row. So that would appear to do the job. Control D just to copy down that formula. Control C and Control V to bring it across. So now I'm getting the same results. That's a good starting point for our average average year formula. So we're going to do the usual, but we're editing an existing formula. So we're reusing, recycling something that we know works already. So we've got average if here. And then we've got a familiar situation. We're being asked for three components, a range, a criteria and an average range. So, so the range is where is the criteria that you're using to distinguish between the data you want to include, the data you want to exclude. That's going to be the region column in the database, column G. And then what's the criteria? Well, we've used the table, set up the table to select the cell to specify the criteria. 
And then where is the average range? So where is the data that you want to perform the operation on that you want to get the average for? That's in column K uh, in the database. We've got the data in column K, the average data in column K, and then we've got in column G, the data we're using for the criteria to decide which um, rows we want to include, which rows we want to exclude from the analysis, okay? So again, we've got um, the formula has gone in there. We've got an output 2.34. So I'm gonna to select to the bottom using the shift key, control D will auto fill down. And we've got figures for each region there. So again, we want to validate this. In fact, first, I'm just gonna reduce the number of decimal places here, Alt H9. Repeat that a few times. Alt H9 on the PC is going to reduce the decimal places there. So for north, we've got two. In fact, let's do east this time. We've got 2.66. So let's go back and validate that. So east, and again, in fact, let's put a formula in here. So let's say average, and then I'm going to just select the range, select the east range. So select all the rows that have the east piece of data in. Hit return, we've got 2.657, which with the rounding is going to be 2.66. Okay, so again, we've done some validation there, and that seems uh, to make sense. So we've answered the questions we want to answer in this video, the total number of children for each region and the average number of children for each region. We've done a sum if and an average if formula. So the sum if formula, remember there's three components there. We've got to say where in the database, what column in the database contains the criteria that we want to use to distinguish between rows to include and rows to exclude. Remember, in this case, we're looking at region. So we selected that column in the database. Then we specified the criteria, north, south, east, west, uh, each region. And then we specified the range that contains the data we want Excel to perform the operation on. So either to sum up those cells or to average those cells. So super powerful database formulae. Uh, another point to remember is, is the references. Make sure you've got the absolute references there. If everything's accurate, it's gonna perform the operation, save you loads of time uh, in your analysis. So now you should be building some confidence with sum if and average if. So there we're talking about a single criteria. We were just looking at region, but we might have more sophisticated, you know, still more sophisticated questions than that. For example, what's the gender balance uh, across the regions? There we're gonna look at gender and region. So we're gonna look at two criteria. Uh, what's the total number of children for females in each region? There we're looking at gender and region. So we've got two criteria there. So the sum if and average if formally, they're allowing us to look at one criteria, but what if we've got multiple criteria? What formulae are available to help us to deal uh, with that situation? That's gonna be the topic of the next video. I'll see you then.